Well, in those days, the Pope John Paul II was visiting many countries. So the Canadian bishop said, why not Canada? So that was left to the president of the conference. And, and the president was only in for about you know, two years. So it probably started with uh, Cardinal Carter and, went, and finally came to my, my time as president. And uh, I got to Rome to talk to the Pope about it. And he said, yes, he was coming. So we were all set. The possibility was coming in, in 83, 84. And uh, then we had the assassination attempt. So all bets were off. So for a whole year or so, nobody knew whether to go anywhere, whether it was going to be alive, whatever. Gradually, uh, I seemed to get better. And uh, I asked to go to, to Rome again and, and see if we could we talk to the Pope. And they said that that was the first day he was back after the assassination attempt. So his face was very white and pale, and, and I said, Holy Father, what we really want to talk about is, I hope you'll be coming to Canada. Canada. He says, yes, I'm coming, but it'll be in 84. So that was fine. I got back and to tell everybody he's coming in 84. So it gave us a little more time to prepare. And that was, that was very helpful for us. We were trying to wonder how we could have a, a kind of a lasting memory of his visit. And people said, well, maybe a statue or whatever. And somewhere along the line, someone said, well, could this be named a basilica? Well, why not? All we got to do is ask. So I wrote to the Holy Father and asked if, if he would dedicate a basilica when he came here. So he wrote, he said, you do it. But we're very happy that you do it. And that's the plaque there. And, and it's, it's still a cathedral. It is, the cathedral is the seat, and the chair, the cathedra, cathedra of the Archbishop. So there it is up there in the sanctuary. That's Archbishop Smith's chair. That's where he preaches in an official way. So that remains, that this will always be St. Joseph's Cathedral, but we add it, St. Joseph Basilica Cathedral or Cathedral Basilica, whatever. It's got the two titles. And so that plaque is a testimony to his, been, his presence here. So by that time, we'd, we'd, we decided we would have an evening service. And uh, people said, well, somebody, I think maybe in the National Committee said, should it be an ecumenical service? So I talked to some of the uh, interfaith uh, leaders here, and I said, well, what about our Vespers, our evening service? They said, yeah, that's all the, the, the Psalms, so let it go at that. The media kept calling it an inter, uh, uh, ecumenical service. For, all, for us, it was our evening prayer. We took the Pope from Nemeo uh, in a Pope mobile down through the, but that's a working class area, a middle class area, but it was right past the St. Josephat's Cathedral, Ukrainian Catholic Cathedral. We would very much like to have stopped there. And, and they talked with the Ukrainian bishop, but the security people said, no, it's getting late. We, we don't want, uh, too many opportunities for somebody in the dark. This is the Pope. He's you know, dressed in white. It'd be an easy target. Pass on right by the Polish church. It'd be wonderful for us to stop there. But we were anxious, the security people were anxious to get down here, get inside uh, before it got dark. And, and even, even that same evening, they, somebody was seen in the roof of one of the buildings just down the road here, sent all the security people up. Well, it was, it was a janitor up there happened to be cleaning up, you know, and he was wondering what's happening down here. But that could have been someone with a rifle. So th th those concerns were, were always in mind there. We had a practice a year before he came. And there was a, a Monsignor came from the Vatican uh, to help us, train us what we're going to do. 
And when we were here, and I told him that we we're going to have the interfaith people up there, and I wanted to take the uh, Holy Father over to meet them. He said, no, no, you can't do that. Why not? Well, he should go, the, we had the sacristy there, and, and I've asked him whatever. I said, okay. Didn't say a word. When I was alongside the Pope, I said, do you want, I didn't tell him about my, do you want to go over? Yes, we go. The Muslims were there, and, and, and it was great for the Orthodox people. You know, we, we, we treated them as equals. You know, they, they were up there in the sanctuary. And I think there were a whole lot of liturgists and whatever would say, you know, you can't. In fact, the matter is, I didn't tell you that. It was uh, beautifully attended and a beautiful celebration. But I asked the, the uh, uh, interfaith people to come and be in their sanctuary here. So they were in the front bench up there. And I said to the Holy Father, would, would you like to meet the interfaith people? Yes, yes. Came over and he shook hands, met every single one of them. Inside St. Joseph's now, on uh, the top of the steps there, you saw the uh, folk meeting uh, aided by the Archbishop McNeil of Edmonton meeting Monsignor A.D. O'Brien, who is the Vicar General of the Archdiocese of Edmonton. <laughs> this province, and as we said, also from uh, Saskatchewan, and even one from northern Manitoba. Dear brothers and sisters, my fellow Christians, and all of you who have come here this evening in order to pray, to pay honor to the mystery of God. On this Sunday evening in Edmonton, the evening of the first day of the week when we Christians celebrate the resurrection of, of the Lord. We come together in prayer. Never forget all his blessings. A heart filled with praise never forgets. A prayer of petition springs from a humble awareness of one's great need for God's grace and from a deep trust in the powerful mercy of God. Thus, it is a company who remains forever the light of the world and who offers us the light of life. The other wonderful thing for me as a bishop he, uh, I said, I thought we were becoming good friends because a whole lot of things happened. 
But you see, I, I was uh, getting the understanding that he respected me as a bishop. He probably said to himself, this archbishop, this is his church, and he wants me to meet those people. I should do it. You know, he could say, no, no, you know, I, you know, as a pope, I, you know, no, no. He'd say, no, this is his church. And the same, you know, a number of times, I would say something or do something, and, and then he would look and again smile at me. He said, "You're the bishop." So, uh, you yeah, know, that's a wonderful relationship, and and uh, it. Uh, you know, helped me enormously in being a bishop here. In a way, uh, you know, uh, if I made mistakes and whatever, I said, well, John Paul II and I understand one another. <laughs> you know, he's in the business of what all of us are in, trying to relate to one another, you know. Love one another as I have loved you. So in a way, that's what Jesus said. Well, John Paul II was saying that to us. You love one another the way I loved you guys. You respect one another the way I respected you. I came in your midst. I spent all this time with you. I, I went where you wanted me to go. You do the same thing. So he was showing by his example how he thought an ordinary Christian should work, should live, should act, relate a high standard of ordinary Christian living.